when you look at that, like I'm getting goosebumps even looking at it. What do you feel like when you, you see it again? Oh, it's so strange because like in the moment, like just, everything's just like a blur. I don't really remember much from actually the moment. So it's cool to like, kind of watch back and see my reaction and everything. Well, it's um, clear though when, when you cross the line there, Israel, and you saw the time, I mean, it just, everything opened up then. You realise what you'd done. Had, like in that split second, you became the fastest ever Irish man. Like. Yeah, I think it's something that's like been in the works for like a few, like a yeah. while, you know, with my, with my coach, Dan Kogallon, and just to kind of see it realise, you know, you can kind of, you can tell I was overjoyed a little bit, you know, just a little oh, bit. Oh, it's amazing. Just, <laughs> just, just, a, just a I remember that <laughs> night tweeting, I think I tweeted that clip and I just titled it pure, just joy unfiltered. Let's talk about the journey to that though, because let's talk about where it started for you. When did athletics appear on your radar? Um, I guess when I was younger, you know, I used to play football. Um, you know, striker. Yeah, striker, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. course. Sticking over the top. Yeah, I, I, I had all the face, all the face. Um, yeah. But after a while, you know, I kind of saw, you know, maybe <laughs> the football wasn't really for me, I guess. So my sister, she used to go down to her, her local Alex club, Dundalgan AC, um, with the coach, Jerry McCardle, back, that back then. I used to just, like, kind of follow her along with, yeah. um, just to watch, really. Tagging um, along with yeah, the big sis. Pretty much, pretty much. Like, yeah, I was, I was like, I, was, I, stuck, I stuck to her like glue, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. Then over time, I started training with them. And then, you know, I joined the club finally when I was about maybe 15, I guess. Um, and then from there, you know, things kind of just took off, I guess. And did they, did you know that you had something then when you were 15? Because 15 is late enough to be starting off in athletics. Most people kind of drop off at that age, like they're, they're late teens and their 20s. But did you know immediately that, hang on a second, I've got something here? Not really. You know, when I first started, you know, I, was get, I was getting beat pretty bad by all the... <laughs> <laughs> All the guys around me, you know, I remember back then, you know, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a journey, I guess, to get to where I am now, you know, but, you know, my coach, Jeremy Ricardo, he kind of believed in me, not just as an athlete, you know, as a person as well, you know. Yeah. Um, he put, invested a lot of time into me just to, you know, see where we could take things and he got pretty far, you know, um, back then, but then. Yeah, but, but you can see your potential. At what point though, Israel, did, was, was your discipline in terms of the 100 metres? Like, at what point in your training do people go, right, you're not an 800, you're not a 400, you're not a 200, you're not a hurdler? How, how is that, how do you get to that point? Who makes that decision? I guess that's a really good question. I guess when you start off in athletics, it's important to like try different sports. There's loads yeah. of different like events in athletics. So when I started off, I was doing hurdles, high jump, long jump. Really? 800s as well, you know, um, but then, you know, we kind of just saw, you know, the 100 and the 200 were like the events where I was winning the most and yeah. we had the most potential. So Makes sense, yeah. I suppose. And at that point then, does when that decision is made by you and Jerry, by your coach, is that's the point then where you start specialising. And does the training change then because you're specialising in a certain event? Yeah, 100%. Like it's <clears> kind of... <throat> You don't, I don't need to be doing any long jumps or hurdles no. or anything like that. No. Kind of, or that not alone. jumping over, Anthony. No, 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 Nobody no, doing no, hurdles no, 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 yeah. no. get hurt. No. So yeah. we kind of just left those alone and started focusing more on the sprints. And, <clears> um, you know, from there, I started winning, you know, some provincial titles, some national titles. Yeah. Uh, with Jerry, I got to represent Ireland for the first time as well. I broke up a few records as well with Jerry. But then, what was that like, the first time you put on that jersey and, and represented <sighs> Ireland? It was just, it was just felt like a dream, you know, like... It's, really? It's not, it's a, you just can't really describe it, like just to be able to you know, represent your country. Obviously, like my first one was um, 2018 at the European Under-18 Championships in yeah. Hungary. Um, yeah, just to put on the vest, it's just, it's just because you watch other athletes, your, other young athletes put, um, you represent and you kind of, I want to be there one day and for it to come so soon, um, yeah. It was an honour for sure. And, and to get as far as you did, like <clears throat> your 0.4 seconds off uh, like getting a medal, it was absolutely amazing because traditionally, Irish athletes, we're not really known for our sprinting and our track and field disciplines per se. We're kind of more long distance runners. I mean, uh, whatever about the marathons, it's the longer distance. Yeah. But when, when you actually broke the record and, um, and it wasn't entirely unexpected, you were kind of gearing towards that with your coach for a while. I know Paul Hessian wasn't a bit surprised that, that yeah. you broke it. But you broke it with no wind assistance either, which is huge. So, I mean, that would have even given you a better uh, a time, time yeah. if, if you'd done that. I mean, so where, in terms of your training, are you now? I mean, where, where, what's the next goal? Um, where are you at when it, when it comes to your next feat? Yeah, for sure. Like over the last three years, me and my current coach, Dan Kilgallen, we've just been working on, you know, trying to realise the potential, you know, that kind of Jerry kind of saw in me and mm -hmm. trying to bring that out. Um, and this season, you know, after a few races, <coughs> kind of knew, you know, that the record was in sights, but we didn't want to focus too much on it, just trying to focus on improving each race and, you know, eventually that record came and obviously it was a great moment. And, and that sounds like but, it was a key, just just run your best yeah, race and there's no that. doubt about it, that record yeah. will eventually fall. I, yeah. in, in terms of those championships that I was glued to, the, the European Championships in Munich, in terms of the team, the Irish team, 
it's like we definitely seem to have hit a bit of a purple patch in terms of not so much medals, but our standards, our you know, national records are getting beaten. There's more athletes qualifying for finals and semifinals. Does that does that buzz go around the team? Like when you see someone else doing well in another event, does that lift you to say, right, I want in on this. I, I want, you know, I want to get to that level as well. Yeah, 100%. Like I think as well, there's loads of young athletes coming through, you know, you can even see in the team and from, from four star championship, loads <clears> of young <throat> athletes coming through and just representing well on, you know, on the biggest stages, you know, that you can compete on. And that's kind of, that's always going to spur on uh, uh, myself and younger athletes, um, for sure. <laughs> and been, look at that picture, Munich, I love yeah. that one. But yeah. there must have been some buzz in Munich, was there? Because yeah. the Irish team as a whole did so well. Yeah, I think there's just something in the air, honestly. Like, yeah. just around, even around the hotel, you just feel like the buzz, like, this is going to be a good championship even before the event and then really like I knew I was going to be one of the first athletes to compete so I just wanted to put in a good performance yeah. and try to you know spur on the rest but of the but that seemed to set the standard then for the rest of the set team set the bar pretty high it really high, yeah. did didn't it yeah I think well, I'm, I'm just grateful you know to <clears> be in that type of position you know people, some people some other athletes were coming to me telling me you know how much like they kind of took from my yeah, performance yeah. Out, you know to see to hear that from athletes that like, I look up to, that really meant a lot to me. And, That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Who, who did you look up to? Who are your kind of heroes in terms of athletics? Like who? Athletics. Who, who are the people you want to emulate? I guess growing up, um, my first start, like, I guess Marcus Lawler, he was a, yeah. he was kind of like the top guy in the sprint. He's still one of the top guys in the yeah. 200 meters. And you know, just I used to watch him compete and um, he got a medal at the World University uh, Games as well. And just seeing like how he kind of went about um, his training and his competition, that really spurred me on and inspired me for Amazing. sure. Amazing. How were you coping time-wise though? Because it's it's full on the training schedule, that plus your studies <laughs> and UCD, plus you're up and down between the dog talent, <clears throat> UCD and everywhere else. I mean, you must be kept going the whole time. How are you managing to balance balance it all? Um, yeah, it is, it, it is tough. His mommy and daddy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting that, yeah. Um, yeah, it is tough uh, to kind of balance things. Well, you know, I have such a great support system with my parents my brother and my sister, uh, and just my coach as well, Daniel Kilgallen, the whole, I just let everyone really just kind of supporting me and showing me so much love and everything. That kind of motivates me and just helps me a lot to kind of balance things. And, but that is huge. Yeah. I know it was particularly for you, but it's huge. Like when we see you do what you do, you know, and you do your races and compete, but there's a huge team around you. Yeah. And without their support, you couldn't do what you're doing. 100%, like I think that's so important, like, you know, Athletics can be a lonely sport, you know, it's an individual event, a sport, yeah. but like behind every athlete, there's a whole team, a whole community, yeah. you know, just burning them on, pushing them to new heights. And, you know, I've experienced that firsthand and yeah. without the people behind me, I wouldn't be where I am today. Who's, who's your best, would be your best pals now on the team? Oh, that's, well, I, I that's think, a horrible yeah, question. I mean, don't ask one of them, one nah, of them, just give I guess, it. I guess probably Rashida probably won the most. Yeah. Because I've been, for my first international, she was there as well and um, we've, kind of went through these different championships together over the years and um, it's great to see the athlete she's becoming and the person she's becoming. It's just great well, to see. Well, it strikes me that there's great characters there. I'd imagine it's not a quiet hotel. <laughs> there's a bit of crack yeah, like, yeah, there's you know? 100%. Like, you know, not too much crack now. Yeah, not too much crack. Well, I don't know how much I can see on TV, but... <laughs> no, no, no. no, no but, uh, yeah, of can course, I ask like, you something yeah. that about, that's always fascinating me about sprinters, particularly the 200 and 400? How much of your training goes into the technical end of it, i.e. the start? How important is that? Because it's not just about running fast. You got to get this. Technically, there's a lot in it, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, 100. Like it, it is a really technically demanding sport, especially yeah. in the sprints. You know, because it's so short. You know, everything has to be perfect, prime yeah. perfect. So we do spend a lot of time um, on the start. Um, that's something me and my coach have been working on this season. Reaction um, times. Yeah, 100 reaction times. Just, just everything in general. The whole package. Just, just like, just focus on different phases of the race and. Um, there is definitely still things I can improve on, so I'm excited to kind of get back to work. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the future is bright, isn't I it? I mean, in terms of the next championships, what's the next goal now? I guess next year there's European Indoor Championships, yeah. World Indoor Championships, and there's European Under-23 Championships as well, and the World Championships again next year. So yeah. those four championships are what I'm aiming for next year. Do you year. feel any Amazing. pressure now to, like, obviously people are going to be yeah, really no bringing home now. the silver? Right? No but, pressure. like, do, 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 do you feel that since you broke the record now, people are expecting more of um, you? I guess people will be expecting more of me. I expect more of myself as well. But um, as I was uh, saying earlier, you know, it's just about just going out there and just putting my best form, just doing what I can and just enjoying it, the journey along the way. You know, you're know, you not in sport for a long time, so... Enjoy it while you're yeah, you, You've got broad shoulders, you can handle that pressure. <laughs> and once you continue to do it with a smile on your face, Israel, you know, the whole country's behind you. We'll, we can't wait to see what's next. Thanks a million for coming in. Really appreciate Thank it. You so, so lovely chatting to you. Thank you. And well done again.